Hi everyone, Lori Marie here, Mixed Media Artist, uh, Vallejo, California. I'm coming to you today from Gallery Renee Marie in Benicia, California. Uh, there are several artists that are represented here in this beautiful gallery. So I am gallery sitting today, so we're going to play together while I'm here, okay? We are going to be working on an altar box or curiosity box, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to show you the supplies that we're going to be using and then we will walk through and see the final product. It's very fun. Uh, it's lit from the inside with tea lights and uh, an acetate window in it so that the lights will shine through. I'm puppy sitting right now. See if I can get this puppy up to show you. This is Chloe. Hi, Clo Clo. Yeah, she's a pretty, pretty girl. So she is a very skinny little chihuahua that I am sitting for the weekend. Now she doesn't even weigh three pounds yet, so we're hoping to fatten her up and find her a good forever home. All right, so enough said. Uh, let's get right to it and create our wonderful art together. So I will see you on the table. All right, welcome back. This could prove to be very interesting because Chloe is on my lap now and she is a vocal, vocal girl. So she may be crying and I may have to stop. So anyway, I want to go through the list of supplies with you. You need a box with a lid <clears throat> because you'll be building your uh, curiosity box in here and then this is going to have the window in it. Uh, with the tea lights inside. So this is a Shutterfly box because I order cards from them. So it's a really fun place. Can you hear Chloe? All right, some fun paper. I think I might use this paper on the inside of the box. I don't know. I might go on the outside, but I'm thinking maybe on the inside. It's like an old gift wrap. Or it almost looks like an old wallpaper. All right, the, this I think I'm going to use on the outside unless I use that other. And then now uh, this is in place of some old book pages. I made one already with some old book pages. And uh, I thought just to shake it up a little bit, I would use some uh, crossword puzzle pieces, uh, pieces of the crossword puzzle to cover the outside of it. All right, I'm going to use, hi, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. I'm going to use a distress ink. The one that I've chosen is the vintage photo. I'll be using that to distress the exterior part of the uh, box at the end. You will need an image for the inside of the box. I've chosen this. And then I'll show you this. This is going to be on the exterior and I'm, I might use this on the exterior too, naming the book uh, All Grown Up. Yes, Chloe, I know. You'll need two tea lights. I tried it with one, um, but it wasn't quite bright enough. These are from Ikea, and they just tip on and off. So the problem with that is if you have one at the top and one at the bottom, it's hard to get them both lit at the same time. So we'll see how that goes. I do have some other tea lights that I can use. I know, Chloe. I know. Uh, some scissors. Your Mod Podge, this is my fancy Mod Podge container, of course, and a brush for the Mod Podge. You've all seen my ooey gooey brush. Ta-da! Ooey gooey brush. I used Velcro to hold the uh, tea lights in place. I've got an X-Acto knife and my Stabilo pencil and a straight edge ruler to do some cutting with. Doing this one-handed while Chloe's in my other hand. A pencil to do some tracing with, so I know what size my window is going to be. Tacky glue is great for uh, gluing items that are heavier than just paper. So those images that I have are more like a postcard than uh, magazine paper. And I liked the look of lifting the back image off the back of the box a little bit. So I just had some foam in my studio probably from a uh, package being shipped. So I've just cut some pieces out of that to uh, 
to pull the the photo forward a little bit. So I'm going to I'm going to shut the camera off uh, and I'm going to start to play but I'll get organized so that uh, I don't waste your time. So I'll be back. We'll play some more. We'll see if uh, Chloe will go to sleep in my in my lap. That'd be great. <laughs> see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. We're going to do this in the usual steps, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is line the box. So what I did is I'm going to start off with the flowered paper. We'll see how that works. And what I did is I put my box down on the paper. And then with a pencil, I just outlined the box. And then I folded it just a little bit smaller than the, than the lines because of the edging of the box. So I did that, and I folded it all the way around, and then I went from crease to crease. Hi, Chloe. Crease to crease, and then I just removed that corner. All right. It does not go in uh, super easily, but we're going to give it a try. So I'm going to put Mod Podge in the, in the bottom of the box. Make sure it's the bottom of the box and not the top of the box, okay? That sounds like a mistake I would make. Yes, I hear you, Chloe. I know. I know. So I'm going to put Mod Podge all over the box, the bottom, not the sides, just the bottom. If I put it on the sides, it gets really tricky to put down. And then I just push this down as best I can and then just stick it to the bottom. We get lots of folds on the sides, but that's okay because we're not even there yet. All right. It's like wrapping a Christmas package backward. Make sure it's tucked all the way down to the bottom. And then the corners are going to automatically start to fold because you've, you have folded them. And then you'll do the trimming after, any pieces that are too long. I'd like that to be in a little bit further, please. There we go. All right, so those corners will flatten out. I'm going to Mod Podge the edge. doesn't have to be all the way to the edge of the box. If it's not, that's not a big deal. Just work it around. Make your corners as flat as you can and then Mod Podge that into place, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I don't have these, this one's not bad. So I will just go in with Mod Podge like this and then stick that to that edge, okay? And you'll just do that around the whole inside of the box. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish that and then we'll go on to the next step. See you in a minute. All right, welcome back. Uh, Chloe is asleep on my lap, so I can concentrate a little bit better here. So just to go over again how I cut the, uh, the paper for the inside, let's just pretend I'm going to use this paper towel, okay? So what I did is I went around the box with a pencil so that I got the correct size of the box. Okay? And then, of course, I wanted enough to go up the edges of the box. So what I did is I just made another square, a rectangle, around that with a ruler, about the same depth as the side of the box. And I just went around that whole thing, just like that. And I did this on the, on the rose paper, okay? Can you see the lines? This is the box, and then this would be the side, the depth of the side. So if your box is deeper, then you need the sides deeper. If it's more shallow, then of course you need these pieces smaller. All right. Then I just cut out that whole piece. That's when I folded it. All right. Folded it so that it was going to fit inside the box. I didn't have quite enough of the rose paper to reach up all the way to the side of, uh, of this side. A little bit on the bottom edge or the top edge, I don't know. Yeah, but I'm fine with that. That is okay because it's going to have the uh, box top on it and it will hide any imperfections. So that's all glued down nice. What I did is I just took my ruler 
and just went in like this to make sure that it was up against the edges. Nice. Just like that. Okay. And that made it nice and smooth. Okay, so that's the first part. We'll be back. All right, now we're going to work on the front or the top of the box. So this will actually be the front of your curiosity box. All right, as you can see, I can't draw a straight line to save my soul, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm okay with that. So I went in an inch from the uh, top and an inch from the bottom. And then, move my Mod Podge. And then I went in about three quarters of an inch from the side, each side. And I just drew a line to the best of my ability to straight as, as straight as I could. Not really good at that. And then I went in with the X-Acto and I'm going around the box, around the line of the whole box, okay? So basically, you're just gonna follow that line And then I'm going to pop that center out. And that is going to be the front of your curiosity box. So this is the way that it's going to look. All right. So if this is kind of frayed around the edges, you can go in with your X-Acto and clean that up. It doesn't matter that it's not perfectly straight, thank goodness, because that's how I do things. Oh, sorry. My husband's calling. Uh, I guess we're going to have to delete that part. Anyway, you can clean up the edge if you want. It doesn't really matter because you're going to be bringing in your external book pages or whatever you're going to use for the front, and you're going to overlap that a little bit so it'll hide any flaws that you might have in the front of your book. So, all right, that's that part. So now we've got the paper in the back and we've got our window in the front. And um, next I'm going to cover this with that uh, crossword puzzle. See how that looks on here or if I'm gonna go back to the um, old book pages. So we'll see. All right, I'm gonna play. I'll be back. All right, so here's the beginning of covering the book. I'm sorry, covering the box with the crossword puzzle pages and um, remember how I said the rough edge would cover the um, the box piece here so it didn't matter if there was a rough edge on the box after cutting it because we extended the book page or the crossword puzzle page to the point where it's kind of frayed kind of lovely and then that the acetate window will be behind that so uh, there again I used the crossword puzzle Ripped pages uh, stick down better than cut pages. So what I do is I just figure out the size that I need and then I just rip them so that they glue down easier. The cut edges will come up a little bit. And so the, the front is done. And so what I'll do now is I will just go around the edges with, hi, Chloe, guess who's awake? I know, guess who's awake? And I will go around and I will glue these up in place. And then after that, I will go around with the um, X-Acto and I will trim these right along the edge of the box so that there's nothing hanging over. So I'm just gonna go around all of the edge and close. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. So I'm just gonna cover all the edges with the crossword pages and then take my uh, X-Acto and go around the edge and trim off the excess. So I'll do that. You don't need to watch me do that. And I think I'm going to take Chloe outside, see if she has to go potty. So we'll be back in a few minutes. Well, we are moving right along with Chloe's help. As you can hear her in the background, she gets kind of fussy. So we have the back of our box taken care of. And now we have the front of our box taken care of, which I think turned out pretty cute. So what I did next is I took some of that uh, foam packing insulation stuff and I cut it to fit the back of my image that I'm going to be putting in my box, these two little girls. 
So I put a piece of the packing stuff on the top and packing stuff on the bottom. I did use the tacky glue to glue that with uh, because the Mod Podge is not strong enough. So what we need to do next is decide where that's going to go in the box. If we put it like this, where exactly do we want those girls to be in that box? So I'm going to say they need to go pretty much at the bottom of the box. And so what I'll do is I will put tacky glue on that foam insulation-y kind of stuff. And then I will just stick it in that box. I know, pretty interesting, huh, Chloe? And just plunk it down, center it as best you can, push it down, and there are our images for that. Okay? Now I'm going to take this piece right here, the top, and I'm going to grab my Distress ink, and I'm just going to go around the edges and just kind of blend that in for a distressed look on the front of the box. Doing the inside edge. And it just kind of does what it wants to do around the edge there like that. Make shift work area here. Oh, Chloe, you're being so good now. Appreciate that. No screaming. And then just along the sides too. Where there is Mod Podge on the crossword puzzle, the Distress Ink will move easier. There might be some areas that did not get Mod Podge on them. They will stick a little bit more. But as usual, I I'm fine with however that turns out. That Mod Podge is still damp. All right, I like it. And what I'm going to do next is with my Magic Stabilo pencil, I'm going to go around the edges just to give it that smoky finish that I adore. on the outer edge and then also on the edge of the window. What we're going to do next is get our acetate image, which I've chosen some flowers. I think I mentioned the last one was a little bit dark, so I wanted to go with less ink and more clear acetate. There, that's the front of that. So I'm going to bring the acetate piece in. It's going to be like this inside that window, which I think is lovely. So I am going to go ahead and use this box as a guide as to where to cut that window. And then I'll cut it just a little bit smaller than that. And then I'm going to glue it inside with the tacky glue. So let me cut this out, uh, stick it inside, and then I'll show you how, it ha how it's turning out, okay? See you in a minute. All right, so what I did was I took the tacky glue and I just put it around the window in the box, not on the acetate window. And then I just put the acetate window in there where I thought it would look good. All right, and then I took my paper dolls and I stuck the man on, I put some glue on the box and I glued him down and then I put some glue on the girls right here so that I can put them on.
Pretty awesome, huh? Oh my goodness. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my Velcro and I'm going to cut a couple patches of the Velcro and put a Velcro on the uh, inside of the box where I want the tea light and then a piece of the Velcro on the tea light so it will stick to the inside of the box. That way they won't go anyplace. So let me do that and then I'm going to put the box together and see what we have, okay? All right, thanks for hanging in there. I know it's a long video. All right, so what I did is I put Velcro on the bottom for those to, uh, the tea lights to stick to. As you can see, they stick out a little bit. That's okay. We just won't close the box all the way. See if I can keep these lit. They don't like to be tipped on their sides like that so much. Can you see the glow? Maybe I'll take another picture of it up high. Anyway, there it is. Your box, your votive candles, your tea lights, your acetate window, your paper dolls, an image in the back. See if I can, I'm going to try to um, get another picture of that. There. Try not to get the glare from the sun. But can you see how the back is uh, lit? And then you can see the acetate window and your dolls. So, pretty darn fun. All right, go create, have fun, and play. Thanks for joining me. Ooh, subscribe if you haven't. That might be a good view. Oh, if I can keep the sun out. Anyway, you get the idea. Subscribe if you haven't. See you next time.